I'm Ned Smith. And I'm Reed Peterson, welcoming you on behalf of our sponsor, Big O Tires, to Arizona Outdoors. Last week we took you to Maricopa County's Usury Mountain Park Archery Range for some bow hunting fundamentals. With the 1985 bow season just around the corner, our show this week will again uh, be concerning bow hunting. Ned, would you introduce our show? Be happy to, Reed. We have some exciting guests for you this week. Uh, they're from out of state. We have Wayne Carlton from Colorado, and we have Dwight Shue from Oregon. And I'll tell you, we really want to welcome you to Arizona, Dwight Thank and you. Wayne. Thank you. Uh, Wayne Carlton is a manufacturer of elk calls and tapes. He uh, makes bow carriers, uh, slings, I guess you call them, bow Wayne. slings. And then he guides also on a limited basis. And Dwight Shu is the Western editor for Fins and Feathers. He's had many articles appear in Outdoor Life and some of the other Field and Stream and some of the other national magazines. Dwight, it sounds like you're just, you love to, to uh, write on elk and you have your own book, we know, and later in the show we're going to talk about that as well. Right. So we're happy to have you on the show. Well, we're really glad to have. We're two experts uh, as renowned as these two gentlemen are. They're not only known here in Arizona, they're known all over the West, where they are the very best. And uh, we hope that tonight on our, on our set here, we can give uh, the format of our set is how to do things. And uh, hopefully we can just show our viewing audience a little bit about elk calling and, and how it works from there. You know, uh, Reed, with the tape that we'll later show on the show, uh, we're going to kick off and talk a little bit with Dwight. We're not going to leave you out at all, Wayne, but uh, maybe we ought to talk with Dwight a little bit about his book, and then later we can really go into the calls with Wayne. Well, certainly one of the red-hot books that's hit the market in recent years uh, has been one of his many books, Bugling, and this one happens to be Bugling for Elk, if I remember yeah. it correctly. Right. I wrote this book about three years ago in response to the tremendous increasing demand for elk hunting knowledge with the archery seasons expanding and getting into the elk hunting, uh, elk bugling season. I felt that it was just a really good opportunity to put out some information and just in the last three or four years interest in elk bugling has just exploded and the book has done very well. I've had very good response to it. It covers virtually everything a hunter needs to know to hunt during what I would call the the early season hunting period, the sept August September bugling time mm -hmm. and I cover everything from planning a hunt during that period of time to learning how to blow an elk call to bugling in a bull and locating a bull and then on to some camping methods and clothing suited to early season elk hunting and then on to meat care which is a, a very critical subject during September when the weather's warm. You really have to know how to handle an elk quickly so I go into meat care too. And then I list some addresses on where to get elk calls. Wayne's is one of the addresses mm -hmm. that's listed. So um, pretty much I, I've tried to write a comprehensive guide to early season elk hunting. In fact that's the subtitle for the book. A complete guide early season. Elk. That sounds like a fa fascinating book there. Now, Dwight, here in the valley, they can pick them up at Fiesta Archery, I understand. Fiesta Archery, yes, is one of the major uh, distributors for that book, and then I'm sure that some of the other shops have that. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, you know, I never, I hate to critique my own writing. I don't think that's probably a good practice, but I've had a number of people write to me and say, and actually I get quite jealous when this happens. I open the envelope and a picture of an elk falls out and the letter says, Dear Dwight, thank you for the book. This was my first year of elk hunting. See the bull I got. It's bigger than anything I've ever killed in 10 years, you know, mm -hmm. but I've had a number of letters from guys that say it's their first season and they've read my book and it's worked for them. So. Oh, that's super. Well, it's, Dwight, we're going to interrupt you a minute here. It's time for a commercial, so we'll just take a little commercial break at this time. Hi, Reed Peterson here. If there's one thing I hate to have on a trip, it's trouble with my tires. 
About a year ago, I bought a set of big old tires, as you can see here. And without question, they're the best set of tires I've ever owned, and I've bought quite a few over the years. I got top quality at a fair price, and you can too. Visit my friends at Big Old Tires in Mesa, 420 East Main, 1060 South Alma School Road, and 100 South Power. You know, Dwight, in reference to your book again, I'd like to add my personal testimony to it because I own a copy, as you are well aware, and uh, it is a super comprehensive book. Thank you. Now, uh, we've kind of neglected Wayne here a minute. <laughs> And Wayne is really a calling expert on this thing, and as we move through the tape, we're going to over-talk that tape, uh, Wayne, and, and we'll ask you questions from time to time and just keep right on going with it. Okay. You know, for our audience uh, information, uh, Wayne's appeared in Outdoor Life, uh, some of the other national magazines, and so you've got quite a reputation following you, and you decided to jump right into this and, and kind of make it your living, it looks like. Well, it's kind of a thing that uh, you pick up a habit in hunting that maybe you can do well at. You don't think of marketing that habit until someone encourages you to do so, and that's kind of how we fell into this. You know, as we get uh, through the tape and out, we're going to show some of your calls at the very end of the show, but boy, from the sounds you've produced here in the studio thus far, it's just they're just super. You're going to be amazed at what he can do with this call, and he'll probably blow it a little bit while we go along in the tape, so... It, it won't surprise you if you hear a lot of calling going on as well. Uh, try, not, try not to do it too much so we don't start going in the rut too early. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's nice to have you guys down here, but I'm kind of unhappy at, at Dwight here. <laughs> since he informs me that he has an elk permit in Unit 7, and Annette and I both, the oh, computer well. failed to smile on us, and we're going to be sitting home. Yeah, and we put in separate, believe it or not, too. We didn't put in together, and we both didn't get dry. I've been looking forward to hunting in Arizona for a long time. I've written stories about for Outdoor Life magazine about three different world record elk that have been taken in Arizona, so that sort of stimulated my interest, to say the least. So oh. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Well, you obviously pay attention to what you write, because those world well, records were taken think, right out of the same you unit that you're in. This business? It's a good way to get a little information. That's a starting point right there. You bet. Arizona's got some super elk in it. Well, we really have some information here uh, that I think uh, we have some good tape, and so why don't we just move right into the tape, and then we'll go on right ahead and talk over it. Okay. Uh, you know, Wayne, you're from the high country of Colorado, and you see a lot of herding animals. Uh, a lot of people don't understand the rut. Why don't you fill in some of our audience as we view this film uh, tape? Well, here in the rut, uh, I have a lot of people tell me that they can't call in a herd bull or they have problems doing so. If I can see uh, a herd of elk somewhere out in a park early in the morning or late in the evening and we have a bull like that raking some trees, which is fantastic, uh, I'll just put a lot of pressure on those elk, trying to get him to come in close or to me get close to him and make him decide if he wants to stay there and fight or take his cows and leave. Mm -hmm. So uh, you get right in and, and bugle right on them. I know when I talked to you before, uh, you, you've called in hundreds of bulls. I've called in uh, a lot of bulls that have been fortunate to do so, and it means a lot of pressure at just keeping pressure on the elk. And when you're bugling, don't try to sound heavier than he sounds. Try to sound smaller, but I do a lot of bugling. Look at this bull here. This is remarkable footage right here, uh, Wayne and Dwight. This is uh, one that's really feisty in a wallow. He's just tearing it up, isn't he? Uh, I've talked to some of the clinics that, that have put on telling people that elk sometimes act like a dog chasing a frisbee and just hopping around back and forth, around and around, and uh, to be able to experience that out in the wild is just it's nothing better. Well, they're a magnificent animal. You look at those bulls and, and uh, I can just feel the back of my neck start to crawl. I want to be out there so bad that <laughs> it isn't even funny. Well, you, you can see as mad as he is there and as upset he's just he's full of fire and uh, just waiting for anything to happen. If you can encourage that through calling, whereas you may walk by a bull and he never will respond unless you call to him first. And if you can get his uh, response coming back to you, uh, to get that, that pitch that he's in is what you're after. Keep him up in a frenzy. Right. I think that's the important point because 
a lot of people think just because a bull's acting like this that he's lost all caution and that during the rut all you have to do is go out there and bugle and one's going to come running. Believe me, he's still got eyes, ears, and nose and they're extremely sensitive and they can be very, very cautious. If he suspects one thing wrong, he's going to lose all that steam right there and he's going to just vanish like steam. You won't even know where he went. So I think it's important to be an extremely careful hunter and to keep him stirred up there like that. And I agree with Wayne, I bugle quite a bit, trying to keep him agitated like that so that he will come in. He'll lose his caution a little bit. But if they're the slightest bit suspicious, it makes no difference whether they're in the rut or not. They are very, very cautious and sensitive. Well, I was kind of interested in a remark that Wayne said is not to overcall basically the sound of that thing, make it sound like a smaller bull. Well, I feel like that elk come to uh, different things as far as coming in to run another elk out. First of all is the sound. If he sounds real heavy, that elk may not feel so secure about coming in to kick tail, so to speak, and get him out. But if you sound like a smaller immature bull and you bugle a lot, it just it seems to really aggravate him. And whatever he does, mm -hmm. you just mimic him to a T. I've had good luck doing that. If they bugle two or three times, I'll bugle. And, you know, I found that the one note seems to pull some bulls in. If you can just give a one note sometimes, right. like a little spike. Mm -hmm. uh, that and, and sometimes an elk will be bugling and do a lot of grunts or a lot of calls or chuckles on the end. If you'll just do that back to him, uh, I've had responses where that was the only thing that would bring him on in. You, ba you basically just mimic him then. Right. Whatever he does, I do. I just don't do it as heavy. Another thing that I've found is very effective is to sound like a cow rather than like a bull. And Wayne mentioned the herd bull, and a lot of times herd bulls will run from you. I've found that sometimes it's effective if a herd bull has run from me to get in and just to become a cow, to become part of the herd. I could, I could if you wanted me to, I could demonstrate some of those cow-type sounds. Why don't you go ahead? You bet. Yeah, we'd like to, I'm sure the audience would like to hear that. And that's basically what the herd sounds like as they talk back and forth to each other. They make these sounds. And if a bull has run away from you, if you can get in there and sound like a cow, obviously he's not going to run from a cow because he's not threatened by that cow. The, she's not going to steal any of his herd. So I found that that will really calm him down. And at times you can use that sound and just put yourself in there and actually stalk that bull. Mm, that's a good tip. Look at this bull. Boy, well, you see, you nice see a bull person. like that, and, and that's certainly the one that you'd want. You wouldn't want a satellite bull. And quite often, trying to get in on a herd bull, you'll scare lesser bulls away that are around the outside and uh, I really don't have a problem with that. If I do scare one, I just bugle and everyone seems to calm right back down. And at the same time, just stay after the herd bull. Just as long as they don't pick up your scent. Right. Well, they roll their old lip back, don't they? <laughs> really get into the rut here. You know, uh, until you really go out elk hunting uh, and hear these cows mew and the barks and everything, you really don't know what's going on in the woods until you get kind of associated with those herds and trail them for a little while. that sound. There's, there's nothing like it in the whole world. I have uh, a lot of folks will ask me when it, how we're going to learn how to do this, especially out-of-staters that aren't where they can hear elk. And, you know, instructional tape of, of any description or a film like this that they can hear elk bugle and all the calls they go through. Uh, that's really the best way to learn is if you can pick up a tape like that that, that has the actual calling sequences. In the tape that you have, which you'll show at the end of this tape, uh, do you go into the mews and the barks and some We of go that? into the cow calls, the spike barks, and the different bugles that I've heard elk make, like a inquiry bugle where you're trying to get one to respond, and quite often they'll come and get in front of you and they'll give you a real loud bugle, but they don't go up and down and pitch very often. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of shakes your pants legs, at least I'm <laughs> sure that's what I did. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, we went through all those calls. Uh, that's super. So the folks, uh, really that's one way to do it right in your living room and get proficient at it. 
Uh, it's good to do it in the car. Uh, sometimes the wife gets a little mad hearing it in home all the time, but <laughs> being able to sit down and listen to that a lot is sure going to help. Well, you know, Wayne, uh, I understand, uh, if I remember correctly, that but you have to be a little careful with your with your uh, cow mews and, and uh, noises because they do have a warning sound in there that you certainly don't want to imitate. Is that correct? You have a uh, uh, alarm bark of a cow that's a real sharp call. I'll try to do one here for you. You want to stay away from that one. <laughs> and if I hear something like that, I'll just cover it back up with a some kind of a bugle just to calm everybody back down. It sound like this. And once you do that, it seems like that bull that heard that alarm bark says, well, maybe there's another bull after her. It adds to the pitch. Mm. That's a good tip for our uh, audience out there, especially those that's lucky enough to have a permit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to try it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nothing greater than go out there when, when these elk are in the rut and when this, all this music's out in the trees. Boy, it's fabulous. Now, Wayne, when you hear, uh, how, 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 to start off with, how do you locate a bull? Do you wait till you hear something or let's say that you went into an area to start to hunt? Well, first of all, I would, you know, have done some scouting to have a good idea there were some bulls in the area. And uh, I bugle a lot. I try to get a response back from the bull because I'm hunting all day long, daylight till dark. And you'll hear bulls bugling early in the morning, but sometimes during the middle of the day when I'm out in the field, uh, I'm trying to get responses all day long. Every time I go over a little rise or around a corner, going into a different basin, a different drainage, I'll get on that ridge and I'll bugle uh, maybe for four or five minutes. And if I don't hear a response, I'll go at it again. But I'll stay there for 15 minutes, maybe on that ridge once I've come into a new area trying to get a response. But I don't very often wait for an elk to bugle to me. I'm trying to initiate the response. Well, uh, I understand that one way that some people locate them, uh, they even, uh, you know, you can't hunt at night, but you can certainly call at night. And they just drive with their vehicle up and through the country and stop every now and then and just keep calling until they get responses. In, in uh, the areas that we hunt in Colorado, it's real rugged. Of course, we can't go like that, but if, if we can't get elk to respond during the daytime, that has been a real good trick is to uh, take the sleeping bag and just go out and try to stimulate some bugling. And if you do, you stay there, and then at daylight, you get in there with them. Mm -hmm. You keep them going at night right. too. If they mm -hmm. if they start to wander off, you stay with them. Just try to stay and listen to them, and uh, stay far enough away and keep the wind right so you don't spook them out of the country. When it's time for you to buy tires, you owe it to yourself to stop in at Big O Tires. The warranty on Big O Tires is absolutely the best around. All Big O brand tires are fully warranted, no prorating, and they include road hazards, even for four-wheel drive tires. Go see my friends at Big O Tires in Mesa, 1060 South Alma School Road, 420 East Main Street, 100 South Power Road. Big O Tires, top quality, fair prices, and a great warranty. You know, Dwight and Wayne, it, it's been a lot of fun to, to have you here. You were here a couple of weeks ago for Fiesta Archery and a seminar, and uh, I'm, you had a big turnout, and it was really good. So, you know, and you'll be back, Dwight, before very long. And you're like you say you you've rubbed it into our wounds the salt a little bit <laughs> but uh, Dwight do you have anything else to shed a little bit on the elk uh, we went through this tape and and uh, we've talked about it what what comes to your mind well I think persistence comes to my mind I hunting is supposed to be a pleasant leisurely event but I find elk hunting to be a fairly hard driving thing and I think the person who's successful is the person who can stay with it day after day after day and not get discouraged. You can't go out there and expect 
to be into elk. Elk hunting is not like deer hunting to me. Deer mm -hmm. hunting I would expect to be seeing game every day. I would expect to find opportunities, maybe be getting a shot with my bow and arrow every day. On elk hunting I do not expect to do that. I might go two or three days, draw a complete blank, but I know that if I keep at them and do not get discouraged, and I think that if I had one bit of advice for any elk hunter, it would be to, to dis strike the word discouragement from his vocabulary. If you get discouraged, you'll never be a good elk hunter, but if you can go out there, like Wayne said, day after day, from dark to dark, mm -hmm. daylight to dusk, and be able to hunt and hunt your whole hunting season that way, then I think that you, that's, that's the very fundamental for being a successful elk hunter. Then the skills come after that, yeah. but you have to have the right attitude and the persistence and be able to accept that. But you know, uh, Dwight, don't you think that kind of works both ways? If you know, it's kind of like varmint calling. If you know you're doing it right, you usually have the patience to stay with the thing. And uh, that's why I think it's important that, that bow hunters learn the proper fundamentals, then they know it's they're, they're right, and it's just a matter of being persistent, it's a, like sir, you say, It's a matter of confidence. It. You have to have that confidence in your ability. There's no question about it. And when you can call like Wayne can. Wayne, let's get right into some of your calls. We're going to run out of time, and all these people are going to want to see. Why don't you get some of your calls up here and show the people? Well, this call here is a uh, reed call. A diaphragm reed was originally used for turkeys and still is. But uh, then we found out you could bugle elk with it. And the same principle, this outside edge traps the air in the roof of your mouth. Mm -hmm and your tongue is placed on this white latex reed and that's what makes the sound by being able to do that. All right. Why don't you give a demonstration on it? <laughs> now, <laughs> being able to uh, have taken some elk, I took the windpipes out and measured them and that's why I came up with this uh, this size tube. All different sizes work well, but I just particularly like this one. When you add that, then it gives that little deeper guttural sound. All right. A little more resonance. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, that <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Each time you do that, you take in a short uh, suction of air and you pop it right back out. Now this is something new you've just come out with. This is a new uh, call that, that we designed and the reason I designed it was so many people were having problems gagging with uh, the reed here. Hold it real steady and so uh, zoom in on that thing. We uh, designed a call that the reed would fit into that would hold the call in place in your mouth for you. Mm -hmm. All you had to do was put your tongue against it and start blowing. Okay. And uh, I'll put it back together here. Just put it into a holder there. And it puts it, just put it into a holder, and then you have a cap that will hold it in place. Hmm. You can interchange the reed. You can put a triple, a, a double, or a single reed in that. Uh, so it works pretty well. Then you stick that into the end of this grunt tube here, mm -hmm. and it gives you the same quality of a diaphragm call. It's just you don't gag on it. So the guy, he can forget about putting the roof of his mouth. Right. And uh, just gives a pretty deep sound. That's good, isn't it, Reed? It really is. That's, that's going to be a, a great boon to the people that can't uh, get onto that, hold it in the roof of their mouth. Well, you take a fellow with false teeth or have, has real bad gagging reflex, it sure will help him. And the thing that's kind of fun with this one, you can use it for turkey, and all you do is put your lips in the center of the reed, and it's like spitting a seed out. You the, keep that type of motion. Amazing. That is. That's great. And the other, the other, just one other thing that you can make with this call is a goose call. Now, I don't know if you have a lot of goose hunting down here, but it's kind of fun to be able to do that with this call. And you just lay your bottom lip against the edge of the reed here, the bottom edge of the reed. Uh-huh. Well, boy, that's got multiple <laughs> uses galore. That's tremendous. So it's a lot of fun. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's, that's the newest thing out. Uh, we, we've had that on the market for about six weeks. Six weeks. Well, you'll sell a lot of those. <laughs> you have some other products here. We better cover yeah, pretty you, quick. Got a bowstring tapes. Well, the, we have a cassette tape that is 52 minutes long. We have uh, instructions on the front side. 
plus live call-in scenes or tape on the back so that you can actually hear what goes on. And the uh, thing that I got really tired of doing out in the woods is when you're hunting all day long is carrying your bow. Mm -hmm. So we designed the piece here that slides underneath your adjustment bolt. You back it out six to eight turns, flex the limb back down towards the pocket, and this slides underneath the bolt head itself. And you got a. And then we have a quick snap release here that just this snaps right on in place. And so once you get that part in, you leave the part in place and you just snap the sling on and off. But it helps you in the field. You're riding a horse or just walking all day. You get tired of carrying your bow. At That's least super. I do. That's a great idea. I see you've got a couple more things, but you know we've run out of time. Well, it's it's been amazing. Fun. It's been fun. You know, we really want to thank you for coming on our show, don't we, Reed? Well, it, it's always a pleasure to have men of their, their uh, expertise here on our show, and I know that our viewing audience really appreciates it. Well, too. thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. So, Dwight, Wayne, thanks again. And right now we're going to go into an update so the sportsmen of Arizona know a little bit more what's going on in the out of doors. By now, you know whether or not you were drawn for this fall's hunts. Many of you were unlucky like Reed and I were, but there's still over 20,000 deer permits available. So you should contact the Game and Fish Department for more information. <clears throat> the deadline will be August 20th for this second draw. You can start applying right now, and it's been going on for a week or so, and there's over 20,000 of these permits, so make sure that you get your name in the pot if you really want to go deer hunting. You know, the Game Department had over 85,000 permits, and they mail those all out, and so there is a lot of fortunate people and a lot of happy ones out there. Now there's an archery deer hunt, it's coming up, it starts August the 23rd on a Friday in the northern units of Arizona. You simply have to have a license and a tag. You should check your regulations before going though, however, because some of these units have some restrictive measures put in them. Now next week, we're going to go to Apache Lake, we're going to fish for smallmouth, and we're going to do it with surface lures. Now most of us think of crankbaits or some little jigs or live bait to catch smallmouth. But it's startling, but it's true. Surface baits really catch small mouse and large mouse. So join us next week. We're going to have Floyd Priest on our show. And uh, Reed, let's talk just a little bit more about some of our calling here. Well, before we do, Ned, let me in, in, uh, interject one other thought. The archery antelope season also opens the 23rd of August for those fellows right. fortunate enough to have drawn a permit. Throw that in. Sure. Let's, Wayne? Let's go right back to Wayne. Well, this, again, you just lay your tongue against the reed and start blowing. Yeah, and then you just pull it off and here you go with just something else. pop that out for a turkey if you happen to see a flock of turkeys. And if you see some geese flying over, You think they might be tough to hit with our bow? <laughs> <laughs> well, Dwight and Wayne, again, it's been a wonderful pleasure to have you down. Uh, we've had an exciting time without a, you know, from guests out of state once again. We sure have. You know, it, it's always, as I said before, a real pleasure to have people of your expertise that can talk about something that's as exciting as uh, elk calling. As far as I'm concerned, you know, I don't think there's, it's the ultimate in, in excitement in the woods today. Oh. It's yeah. fabulous. Well, I've enjoyed being down here this time, but I think I'm going to enjoy it even more come September 13th. You're coming back. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good luck. And if we can help you, Dwight, Reed and I will be happy to do it. Appreciate it. We well, sure will. I'm Ned Smith with Arizona Outdoors. And I'm Reed Peterson, wishing you good hunting, good fishing, and have a very pleasant week.
got enough on my mind without worrying about tires. We think you've got enough on your mind without worrying about tires. Once you're on Big O tires, they can't cost you another penny. Not for service, repair, or replacement. Because as long as you have legal tread, we'll repair them or replace them free. Even road hazards. We can't solve all your problems. But isn't it nice to have one less to worry about? Once you buy Big O tires, there's nothing left to buy. Ned Smith. And I'm Reed Peterson, welcoming you in behalf of our sponsor, Big O Tires, to Arizona Outdoors. Last week we had with us Wayne Carlton from Colorado and author Dwight Shue of Oregon to offer elk hunters some tips on calling elk. In an effort to keep our show timely, we're going to return to one of the central Arizona lakes for some topwater fishing. Ned, would you introduce our show? Be more than happy to, Reed. I've got one of my favorite people with me tonight, Floyd Priest. Floyd, we welcome you to the show once again. Glad to be back again. Hey, you know, we love to have you on. You're one of the top guides in Arizona, one of the top bass pros. You know, and you've got a special little uh, feature tonight that you've told us about, and we went up and filmed it, fishing for smallmouth with topwater lures. That's something that just isn't heard of. Well, they catch a lot of fish on in the late, you know, late summer, late fall, early fall, late summer on surface plugs, but you know, going out there in 110 degrees temperature and catching them on surface, well, most people doesn't understand that. And I think it's been there all along mm -hmm. and nobody has done it. And I kind of stumbled onto it by an accident from a novice that told me he's seen all these brown carp, a bunch of them, <laughs> and he was started fishing around these carp and uh, he caught a bunch of little smallmouth. Yeah, so I told Carol, I said, let's get some surface plugs. And this is a patchy lake this too. This is a patchy lake. And uh, we went up there and the first day we caught 30 smallmouth uh, from two to four and a half pounds. And we right. kept about four fish is all we kept out of that group. And then I started guiding up there and we caught high as 60 some morning. Well, yeah. we're gonna move right into a commercial real quick here along with our tape. So we'll just go right into that right now. All right. right. Hi. Reed Peterson here. If there's one thing I hate to have on a trip, it's trouble with my tires. About a year ago, I bought a set of big old tires, as you can see here. And without question, they're the best set of tires I've ever owned. And I've bought quite a few over the years. I got top quality at a fair price. And you can too. Visit my friends at Big Old Tires in Mesa, 420 East Main, 1060 South Alma School Road, and 100 South Power. You know, Floyd, before we get on with our tape, uh, some people might be a little bit critical of the fact that we've maybe had you on here three times, saying, gee whiz, uh, a bass pro, and you've had him on that many times. But also, I'd like to say this about Floyd. He is a, one of the most versatile outdoorsmen I've ever seen. Who else in Arizona ran an airboat for us, for instance, and now we had him one time on doing his regular thing as a bass pro, and now this is something, another special show on topwater fishing, and we're really glad to have you on here. Well, it's glad to be here, and uh, matter of fact, I do have me another airboat coming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Floyd, you're what I call a meat and potatoes fisherman. You love to catch fish. Well, especially catfish, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You've caught yeah. a 43-pounder this year already. Yeah. Yeah. You know, without anything further, we're going to go right into this tape, and it's going to last a while, so we hope the people enjoy it. We're going to go right to Apache Lake now and catch some of these fish. Well, here we are at Apache Lake, folks. Out Arizona Outdoors is on the scene with Floyd Priest, and he's got a nice small mouth on. Floyd, I understand you only got two pound tests on that. Yeah, and I wish they had ten now. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> Surface? It's surface. Oh, man alive. I'll tell you, folks, you real big we've one. had a lot of fish on this morning already. It's been a little bit too early to film, but we've got one right here now. And, Floyd, how many would you say we've already hooked? Probably about 12 or 15. 
Son of a gun, it's it's the right time of year to come up and go surface fishing at Apache. We hope to really show you something today with Floyd. Boy, it looks like a good one, Reed, right down here. Maybe we can swing in and take a look at him. Oh, boy, look at that. Oh, that's a nice smallmouth. Yeah, he ain't a real big one, but I'll tell you what, I'll take him anytime. You bet. Boy, look at him. He's hooked good, isn't he, Floyd? For once, he is. We lost most of the rest of them, and I let that one bust me off. This is really a nice morning. The lake's just perfectly calm. No boats on the lake at all. In the middle of the week, you got it yourself, don't you, Floyd? Yes, sir, you sure do. Weekends are tough, huh? A little bit tough, especially for surfers, because they, they wind up uh, having uh, so many boats, and you got skiers, and they make the ripples on the water so much in the waves, and it's hard for them to see the surface plugs. Boy, that is web thin line, Floyd. Two pound, what are you gonna do, try to lift him in? No. <laughs> Boy, you want a net? Yeah. Uh, he's just, he's not a real big fish. But. Well, he's nice. Ooh, there he goes. Where is he? Where is he? Did broke we him broke him off, folks? <laughs> Two pound test line. This is the pro, Floyd Priest, out of Mesa Marine. And boy, let me tell you, Floyd, you're the fisherman when it comes to smallmouth or just about anything else. If it's got fins and gills, he's after it. Yeah. It beats working. <laughs> 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 hey, that's super. Hey, Reed, uh, that was pretty nice, wasn't it? Well, let's get back and get another one. All right. We're going to go right on it. We're going to show you right now what Floyd's using on us for a lure. Floyd, tell us exactly what that is. That's a floating repeller, and I believe it's a F7, which is floating. It's golden color, and I also cut the bill off so it will stay on the surface. Okay, we need to move your hands so okay, they can sit on. You know. Okay, he's just wrapping around. What do you do? Use a what type of knot? Trilene? No. What is it? I don't know what. Just a uh, uh, what they call like it. Like pretty special. Yeah. A <laughs> cinch knot. Good cinch mm -hmm. knot. Okay, now we'll hold that up real close so Reed can get right in on that. Can you yeah. see that, good Reed? Trims out off the there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You take it on a grinder and just grind it down. Grind it right down. So it'll stay more on the surface. Uh, great. Now our next, we're going to show you folks exactly how Floyd uses this. So you watch his rod and everything that he's doing because this is the key. And we've already hooked about 15 fish this morning and you just saw him break off one with two pound test. Okay. You can watch Floyd throw over there by that rock and watch his pole action here. Did he get it? He missed it again. He missed it twice in a row. Took two swipes at it. Now Floyd's holding his rod, Reed. Looks like straight up 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Rolling and twitching. He really likes fishing his very spook. Oh, he got it. He got it. <laughs> hey, on, on camera. <laughs> he's just a small, small male. So. Well, he looks like he's about as big as that other one. Smaller. Is he? He makes too much racket. Them big ones don't make much noise when they hit. Well, hang on to this one. Let's get him in the boat. Two pound test. Woo! That's when you wish you had ten pounds. <laughs> well, I imagine if you got one of those great big four pounders on here in a smallmouth, you'd wish you had a ten pound. You say you've caught quite a few of those, Floyd. Oh, yeah, we catch a lot of them in a How long will it take you to bring one in on a two-pound test that's in the four-pound class? You know, we got a largemouth this time. Talking about here about smallmouth, we wind up catching a largemouth. I don't know whether I can lift him in or not. You're going to make it. <laughs> we got a fish in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, we sure hooked a bunch of them this morning. Well, we'll go back out there and see if we can catch a smallmouth. That's one. You always anticipate that bite, and then you want to jerk that line. You can't jerk it when you got two pound test on. You just kind of shake it, huh, Floyd? Just not to make that lure wiggle, right. Of course, you do this a couple hours of the morning and the afternoon, and you come in and feel like you're still doing it after you get off the boat. Looks like you're working that in little jerks, Floyd. Yeah, real quick little jerks. Make it look like a shad. Imitating a shad is swimming on top. And then you can reel it, make it like it's skipping across the water like a, like a bass is after it. And a lot of times they'll just come up and eat it.
and it'll hit you right at the boat sometimes, so you really got to be careful. Try some of that shallower water, see if he might have moved back up there. Oh, what a monster! Oh! All you got to do, Reed, is just throw it out there and <laughs> Well, I even it. catch him sideways. Well, what have we got here, Reed? <laughs> well, that's, that's the champion Hurt. of the deep. Hurt special. Top fish for the day. At least it's a bluegill. This is a money fish. At least it's a bluegill. I told you guys I was going after flatheads. I'm after my bait. <laughs> Tell you what I want you to do next time. Just throw it out there and leave it. You know, you got a backlash that That's time. That's what so. I'm going to do again. I want to show you guys that that works. Go. Hey, boy, you got <laughs> there a he Oh, look at that thing jump. <laughs> man, oh, Talk man. Talk about aerial acrobatic. <laughs> That is fun. He's got, there he comes. What pound test, Floyd? He's got two pounds on two that pounds thing. Two pounds on that thing with that small mouth. Two oh, pounds. Yeah. Where is he now? Right he, down. He's coming he's out. Right, right here, there. Right there. <laughs> yeah, hey, over here. this pole and get it okay. out of the way, will you? Over here. He's on the boat. Now. Coming out. Right there. He is. Two pound test, huh? Yep. So. Oh, look at that little rascal. Mm. Boy, they are chunky fish. Yep. Well, he's nine. Look at <laughs> He don't want to get I want to watch Floyd he? get him in the boat again. <laughs> oh, man. He don't want to quit, does he? Two pounds. He don't want to quit. I did that while ago and lost that other one. He's going to get a hold of the lure this time, huh? He's going to get a hold of the fish. Hey, he's a chunky little old rascal. What does he weigh, Floyd? Oh, he'd go about a pound and a quarter. Maybe a pound and a half. Not a real, not a real big fish, but on two pound test, it didn't have to be real big to, to have a good time. Let's take a look at it now. Well, there I have pretty fish. Yep. Nice fish. See if we can catch another one. Sounds good. Boy, you're doing good. Then we'll go have some breakfast. Always think about something to eat, right? Let's catch fish. Eat tomorrow. He's good as the other one. Point of that at What do you got on there, Floyd? Got another little small man. Oh. He's coming up. There he goes. Oh, there he goes, <laughs> man. Watch those things jump. Love it. Tell me when he comes up again. He's coming right to the boat. He's right here. Here he's boat. coming. Here he comes. Where is he? I don't see him. Okay, I've got you. He's coming underneath. Is he coming up yet? No. Oh, oh, there he goes. There he goes. Two pound what? test, he's gone. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not a very good knot tire, am I? I ain't gonna say nothing about your knot anyway. All like right, that. all right. Well, how, yep. how big was he? He's about a pound and a half. I won't put in there then that that's the Floyd special. We'll retract that statement. Right. <laughs> <That's Yep. laughs> I'm gonna get me another lure and see if we can do that again. Uh oh. Thank you. You know, I did if I brought him up on that. There he comes up. There he is. Man, he's a nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, four pound test, maybe we can lift him in. You might lift that one in. <laughs> Let's see what he looks like. How much do you weigh? Oh, a pound and a half. Oh, they're nice fish, though, aren't they, nice to catch on surface? Well, oh, look at that. Summertime smallmouth. Boy, you're not a kidding. Press that lure again there, Reed, when you release that fish. You ready? Yeah, okay. go ahead and let him go. Okay. He still wants to jump. Hold that lure up there, Reed. Put it in my hand here, Reed. Yeah, there it is. Ro uh, Floyd, now that's just a Rapala, huh? It's just a Rapala. Tip, it up, tip your hand up a little, Reed. There you go. All right. You gotta have the light line where you can throw it, otherwise you get no action. Yeah. You now I've got a four ten. pound test yeah. on this one. I'd recommend four or six, because that two pound is, uh, we had that on for another reason. What do you got? Uh oh, look at that small mouth that. jump. <laughs> that is fun when they do that. Tell me when he's coming up again, Floyd. Okay. He's stand down. He's sounding now. Well, we've hit the spot now, haven't we? Isn't this great? <laughs> Catch these blooming things. Two pound test, too. Boy, I'll tell you, you gotta be careful. Oh, yeah, you gotta have that drag set so loose. Is he coming up? No, he's mm, diving. Looks like he's staying down now. 
You want to get your head up. You want me to net him one time, Floyd? Yeah, we might net him. Uh -oh. Coming up. Coming up. Coming up. Coming up. Then he went back down. Or he could. Coming? Yep, he's coming up right now. Where is he? I ain't gaining much on him. You tell me when he comes up, okay. <laughs> you get him out of that motor back there. I hope you're going to get him tied up in my lure. I dropped nah, it to grab this. Right. Now if we can get two lures in him, we might get him in the boat. Come on, get your head up, fish. Well, he's sure bending that rod. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to be really careful with that light. All right. Oh, you went back down, Ned. Really? There, he, there he is right there. Where is he? He dove again. Boy, what do you figure he weighs? Uh, he's about, about a pound and a half, so he go. <laughs> that two-pound test. He, he didn't drag him in like I do with four. <laughs> Unless not well, he's he's making it tougher on you than the last ones yeah. did. Well, tell me when you can see him, Rick, so I can swing the camera around. All right, I'll do it if I can see him, but he's still sounding. I don't know where he's going. You wouldn't think a fish had that much power, would you? He's got the fight in him, doesn't he? I can see him now. There he is. Oh, he 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 Here he comes. Hey! Well, that looks like a penny. Hold him up that way. Why aren't those things pretty those little things? Are, those things are worth the trip up here, I'll tell you. Well, he's, Matter of fact, I'm going to let y'all go back and go to work, and I'm going to stay and fish in the morning. Oh, look at that thing. Isn't he pretty? Man. Yeah. Bronze back rascals. Yeah, he'll, go, he'll go close to two, doesn't he, Will? Yeah, he's a pretty good little fish. And Floyd, you've caught a lot of them up close to five, right? Yeah, I was up here fishing one morning, and uh, I was, had a guide trip, and the people, uh, something happened, they didn't make it, so I took Carol out, and she had 10 fish that weighed 43 pounds. Oh! All smallmouth. But you were, were, were the eye, not on this ultralight, that's not no, on we two had, we, had, we had four and six. Uh -huh. We had four and six pounds. Right now, you're with that two pounds. Yeah, but it's a lot more fun on two pounds. They get away while, you know. Now, if I was in a tournament, it'd be a different thing. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Golly. Let's go catch another one. Let's get another one. Little fish. Come on. Sharp nerve wracking when you come out and grab it right at your boat. <laughs> yeah, they took that thing right out of the boat. I dropped this line in my pole. Got him, George. Yeah. Uh, you didn't get him? I thought the suckers might be back that way. Probably one right out here. Don't, don't jerk on him. Wait, what do you feel? Floyd. Yeah. How deep are you fishing? About four feet. Right out in the middle of the lake, huh? Sitting in about eight foot of water, fishing about four. Looks like a good one, Floyd. He's a pretty good one. I'm getting about ready to go. And I he just they come were up all set for the morning. Thing. He proved they weren't. Look there. Look here. Think I didn't barely have him? Well, oh. the thing was, he hit him right by the boat, about six feet in front of him. If you'd have had a heavier line on there and put any pressure on him, he'd have pulled it right loose. Go back, little fish. <laughs> Sound fine. That was in 20 foot of water. 
Okay, sucker, come up out of that deep water and hit it. Oh, well. well, I'll tell you, you and that two pound line, you have just done nothing but kill them all morning. Well, you can throw that a lot better, but uh, I think I got a large mouth. I don't want a guy. <laughs> <laughs> These new reels, those new cardinal reels, I tell you what, they're hard to beat. That's right. Nah, you smooth. really like them. Yep. Boy, oh boy. What's the model of that Cardinal reel? Do you know, Floyd? It's, just, it's Cardinal 3. Cardinal 3. So he's getting trouble. pretty close here, Ned. He's right under me. Except I still haven't seen him. Neither have I. <laughs> I just heard the There bit. I see him. Well, yeah, he's a large amount. Mm -hmm. Coming up. Ah! He ain't a monster, but... He's a good fish. Any of them's good when you catch them on surface. Especially on a two-pound test. <laughs> well, that looks like a good one, Floyd. Uh, I tell you what, it's fun. You don't you catch both out here on this reef. You catch smallmouth and largemouth, and uh, you catch them like that on two-pound test, Floyd. Yeah. That makes it kind of nice. Tell our audience, uh, you know, when's the best time to come up and surface fish? Well, I generally really start about the end of August, but uh, we can. Uh, Right now, about all July on through August and September, but I generally come up about uh, the last week in August and first two weeks in September, and I do a little better. Middle of the week, though. Middle of the week. On the weekends, if the water's rough or if the wind's blowing, I've been three days in a row and couldn't even get on the water because of the wind. All right. We better put him back in where he can breathe. All right. Way to go. We're going to go down to Apache Lake Marina and have us some biscuits and gravy. They cook good food I'm there, huh? I'm all for that. <laughs> That's yeah. good. I'm ready because I think my stomach thinks my throat's been cut. Floyd, as we approach the Apache, Apache Lake Marina, go get in a little breakfast. Uh, boy, they really have improved this through the year. Who, who, who's, who has the marina now? Uh, Jack and Nancy Schuster has it now, and uh, they've done a lot of work on it, the improvement, even on the, the, uh, the trailers on the hill, the restaurant. Uh, used to, you didn't hardly have room to move around in a restaurant. Now it's uh, very large. They have even a live band here every now and then. And, and, uh, have a few dances up here. Looks like they've got houseboats for rent, too. Yes, sir. They do. They have, I believe, four houseboats. They have uh, some ski boats for rent. They have pontoon boats for rent. And uh, they've very got, got very good food in the restaurant. And I think every Friday night they have prime rib. Of course, I don't, uh, I kind of like that myself. You know, Floyd, I've lived in the valley there all my life. And, you know, I come and go. And I, I really never known what was here at the, at the Apache Lake Marina nor the concession. Now they have great sleeping accommodations there. I, I, I was totally amazed. They have a brand new motel. They have a brand new one. It's been open for about a year. Uh, the old one is just below it. Uh, it didn't have the TVs or anything, but the new one has a, has nice television and has cable uh, TV and uh, very good accommodations. They have a little uh, shop up there also that uh, can do some uh, boat work if you have a problem on the weekend, which makes it kind of handy. They just, they just have a complete concession here. That's that's really great. You know, like I said, you live there all that time and don't pay any attention to that, but I'm going to start taking advantage of it. It's super. Well, I've, I've fished all over Arizona, and this is one of my favorite lakes. I used to fish Pleasant all the time for the white bass, and I got hooked on the smallmouth, and uh, and they just keep coming back. Yeah, that's why I guess they call you the smallmouth king yeah. in this country. When it comes to smallmouth, well, you take the cake. When you're fishing line like we was today, that, that fish is a king, I'll tell oh, you. Oh, that was really fun. I never saw anybody fish two-pound yeah. test line before. Hit those things one right after another. You had a great morning. Uh, we had a good morning. If we'd have caught all of them we had in the boat, well, we'd have <laughs> sunk the boat probably. Uh, let's go see if Jack Nancy's got some of that biscuits. Hey, I'm ready. ready for that. I'm ready. An Arizona boy, though, do you think uh, you uh, 
like biscuits and gravy, or you like ham? Oh, I was reared on biscuits and gravy. All right, well, we'll go have some. That and bread and milk, and I don't think they're going to serve that for breakfast. No, I doubt that. <laughs> When it's time for you to buy tires, you owe it to yourself to stop in at Big O Tires. The warranty on Big O Tires is absolutely the best around. All Big O brand tires are fully warranted, no prorating, and they include road hazards, even for four-wheel drive tires. Go see my friends at Big O Tires in Mesa, 1060 South Alma School Road, 420 East Main Street, 100 South Power Road. Big O Tires, top quality, fair prices, and a great warranty. Well, you know, Floyd, we really talked a lot about two-pound tests, but we didn't really cover the rods well enough. Can you tell our viewers exactly what you'd recommend in rods? Well, I, I like the Berkeley rod. It's six-foot, light-action rod. It's six-foot, one-piece with a cork candle. I kind of like the cork candle. And uh, this is what they call our lightning rod. Their lightning rod, yes. And that's yeah, one of the lightning, finest. That's stuff. one. That's one that I like the best. I, I, I you know, these pros and cons on rods. But if they're going to, I like because I use a lot of six pound tests. You know, mm -hmm. now we did it with two, and we had a reason to do that because we'd been doing a, uh, a another, uh, right, another another show before that. So, but the rod, if they're going to use that type of line, they need to use. Now this is a lose, and it's an ultra light rod, mm -hmm. and I believe the model number on this is uh, this is a. Uh, LSUL, in other words, LS model, and it's an ultralight rod, mm -hmm. and it's five foot and six inches, and the rod is very limber. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, we got some two pound test on here right now with the lure we was using. Now, you take that and the, the limberness in the rod with that and a good drag system, and you can handle about any size fish because oh, yeah. we had 25 and 30 pound buffalo, and we fought like for 20 and 30 minutes, and we, we actually lost the fish. They didn't break our line. They just wore the lure loose that we had in their mouth, which uh, uh, we've caught in eight and ten pound carp. We've caught so, uh, but if they're going to do that, and and the rods like about forty seven dollars, and the reel is like thirty seven or something like that, and it's uh, if you match that rod up to kind of fish you're catching, well, it's it's going to be great. They're going to have a good time. You said something there that I think you might enlarge just a little bit on Floyd, and that was setting that drag system. The drag you know, that's system. That's obviously the key in ultralight to keep from breaking that thing. That drag system is very important, and any time you have one that's on the back of the reel like that, and that is a, a Teflon drag system in there, and there's about six or eight discs in there, so if one heats up, the others will take over. And it's a very the best drag system I've ever seen on a spinning reel. So you like the Garcia? And I like the like Garcia Cardinal. Cardinal. Yeah, Zebco used to import it a few years ago, and it's made in Sweden. Now it's made in uh, in Japan, and Garcia imports it from there. And it's even a better quality reel now than it was then. Well, in setting that, uh, do you set it with your hand by pulling it out, or do you allow a little more for the bend? Or Well, it's kind of experience, you might say, that does it, but if you're going to do it, pull on the end of the rod, because that's where your pressure's at. Mm -hmm. Don't pull here, because you're pulling straight. You've got to move it out here. Uh -huh. Well, Floyd, you've really showed the people something that's, you know, been overlooked, like you say, probably for quite a few years, you know, on this. Well, even I've overlooked it. And it, it took a novice to uh, to get me yeah. to, to try what I wanted to try for a long time, and uh, it took that to, to get me, and then it went from there, and it works. You need to move right into your update now. Yeah, Floyd, thanks again for Thank being you. with us. Thank hey, you. We it. really appreciate it. Appreciate Floyd. it being here. Morning and white wing dove seasons open September the 1st. There's a 12 bird limit for the total in the aggregate. Better scout out your areas right now. These stormy weathers and cool mornings will send them south of the border real quick. Archery deer opens this Friday morning, August the 23rd. All you need is a license and an archery deer tag. This is Ned Smith. And I'm Reed Peterson wishing you good hunting, good fishing, and have a real pleasant week.
mortgage payment, car payment, food, miscellaneous expenses, and don't forget lunch money. Now you're out of cash, but you need tires fast. What do you do? Get a Big O Tires credit card. With a Big O Tires credit card, you can buy your tires today and pay for them later. Just come in and fill out an application. It only takes about 30 minutes to process. The Big O Tires credit card. It gives you that big old feeling of confidence.